Hey guys, Sav here, and I done screwed up again. Uh, recorded this video last night and did not. Uh, my microphone was not recording. Yeah, the video recorded, but I didn't have a microphone input selected. I don't know why this happens. Um, but, um, yeah, so I'm going to try to put a little bit of, uh, put this in perspective just a little bit. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm trying to explain that we're going to watch the season one recap video. Uh, there's a green star on my map with a person that I need to speak with who will show me this uh, season one recap video. Basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get into season two living story, which I have unlocked. Uh, there, season one is still to this day not available. However, you can watch this video as a bit of a recap to give you the lowdown on what happened. Uh, and it'll help us understand a little bit better what's going on when I start season when I start season one um, or see I'm sorry season two part one uh, side note here uh, I did uh, change Darla again uh, I don't want to talk too much about it but uh, she now has white hair it's actually platinum blonde it looks kind of white it's kind of grayish uh, it, she's based off I over the summertime I started reading uh, spider-man comic books and one of my favorite characters is the black cat, so I wanted to try to uh, kind of match her to the black cat a little bit. She's a thief, the black cat's a thief, so I just thought it fit well. Uh, so any minute here, we will start rolling, rolling on and uh, go talk to this person who shows the uh, season one recap. Scarlet Briar. Where should I begin? No one at first knew why she began her reign of terror. Some say she peered into the very fabric of the universe and went insane. Her attacks began in the Northeast and spread like fire. She formed uneasy alliances and controlled her minions through deception and brutality. She leveraged their technology to scan for currents of magical energy called ley lines. Each attack had a purpose, allowing her to collect data from across Tyria that would later be used to assault Lion's Arch. When all hope seemed lost, the heroes of Tyria rose to the task, along with new allies. Bram Arison of Cragstead. Rox Whetstone, Gladium. Casimir Mead, Mesmer. Marjorie Delacroix, Investigator. And Taimi, Prodigy from Radasum. Led by the Pact Commander, they dismantled Scarlet's operations. But while they reclaimed the city at the Battle of Lion's Arch, they would later discover that she had completed her mission, even in death. Scarlet's machine struck the ley line deep beneath Sanctum Harbor, directing its magic far into the Maguma jungle, changing the course of history. Uh, I'll try to fill in some of the gaps here. Um, I know I'm talking, it's just not being recorded, obviously. Uh, we're going to go through and uh, speak to her about all the different characters we just met there. We met five new characters. Um, I forget their names already. Uh, Marjorie, Casimir, Rox, Bram, and Timey. They're all, we'll all meet them when we start uh, the Season 2 story. They're actually integral parts of the story. They're with us every, almost every step of the way. So this will give us a little bit of background history uh, with each one of those characters when we uh, ask this person about these Marjorie Delacroix is a necromancer from Divinity's Reach. Until recently, she was a member of the Ministry Guard of Divinity's Reach and was responsible for protecting various Crichton ministers and their staff. She quit that job after witnessing some terrible abuses of power. After she left the Guard, she went into business as an investigator for hire, taking on various cases that her clients needed handled so often with discretion. When Scarlet's Aetherblades assassinated Theo Ashford of the Captain's Council, Marjorie led the inquiry that led to the arrest of their leader, Captain Mai Trin. Trin later escaped her cell and fled to the Mists, shortly before Scarlet's attack on Lion's Arch. Miss Delacroix would later help destroy the Tower of Nightmares in Kessex Hills, 
along with Lady Casimir Mead and the Pact Commander, who led the mission. Through her connections as a Durman Priory member, she obtained evidence samples left behind by Scarlet's forces. The Pact Commander, with Marjorie's help and that of Casimir and Vorp, predicted the attack on Lion's Arch. Despite their warnings to the Captain's Council, the city fell, but it was later reclaimed. Lady Casimir Mead comes from noble stock, but her family has since fallen on hard times. Her gambling brother Kyle put the family deep into debt, forcing her father to liquidate their possessions. Despite his efforts to fix Kyle's mistakes and unable to pay his own bills, her father was thrown into prison, where he died. Casimir, now forced to work, found employment as an investigator with Marjorie Delacroix. Their combined efforts, with the Pact Commander's help, led to the solving of Theo Ashford's murder during Dragon Rush. Casimir was instrumental in uncloaking the Nightmare Tower, as well as in other battles during Scarlet's campaign. She distracted Scarlet in the final battle on the Breachmaker, giving the Pact Commander a chance to deal the death blow. Did you ever visit Lion's Arch before it was rebuilt? No, Magister. No, Roxas a Gladium. She lost her entire warband in a mining explosion. Since then, she performed tasks for Ritlock Brimstone, the Blood Legion Tribune, in an effort to join his stone warband. She crossed paths with Bram at the Molten Alliance facility. Together, under the leadership of the Pact Commander, they infiltrated the weapons base, freed the prisoners, and destroyed that operation. Throughout Scarlet's campaign, Rox fought beside the Pact Commander, providing ranged support and healing the injured. She accompanied the strike team that led the assault on Scarlet's Breachmaker in Lion's Arch. When Bram broke his leg during the fight, Rox stayed behind to tend to him. She also revived Marjorie Delacroix, who was wounded by Scarlet's blast. In tending to her friends, she forfeited her opportunity to kill Scarlet, leaving the Pact Commander to do the honors. This was in direct conflict to her orders, and it ultimately led to her not gaining membership in the Stone Warband. If I'm remembering correctly here, I'm telling you about uh, some of the fractal uh, videos I did a long, long time ago back in my channel. Really low level fractals, like level 1 through 10, somewhere in there. Uh, where I do actually go through some of the old um, dungeon maps from uh, Season 1. Season 1 had a couple temporary dungeons, uh, and parts of them got turned into fractals. So there's like three or four of them. Uh, and I did a couple of them on the Fractal Fridays I did a while back. So if you want to check out a little bit of s some of the Season 1 story, you can go back and check out those Fractal Fridays uh, videos some buried somewhere on my channel. Salutations. Bram Arison hails from Cragstead, a sizable homestead in Wayfarer foothills. He's the son of Arista Galkin and Borgia the Sun Chaser. As a child, he never knew his mother. She and Borgia parted amicably so she could forge her legend with Destiny's Edge. Bram's father, a hero in his own right, agreed to raise Bram to adulthood. Unfortunately, that wasn't meant to be. Borgia died when his son was a young boy. In the care of friends, Bram grew into an impetuous teen. He has a reputation for being a bit impulsive, but his heart's in the right place, or so I'm told. When the Molten Alliance swept through Nornlands, Bram saw the violence firsthand. He sought help from the Char at the Black Citadel, but was turned away. Tribune Brimstone had no troops to spare, and he didn't believe the claims that Bram was the son of his guildmate. Undeterred, Bram approached Newt Whitebear in the hopes of gathering Norn to fight back the invaders. Again, he was denied, as the sons of Svanir were perceived as the bigger threat to Holbrook. Bram ultimately teamed up with Rox Whetstone, a Char Gladium who had fought the Molten Alliance at Nolan Hatchery. Together, and with the aid of the Pact Commander, they infiltrated the Molten Alliance weapons facility and destroyed it from the inside. Bram was involved in a number of operations against Scarlet. He joined the Pact Commander in the final assault on the Breachmaker, but he broke his leg in the process. Ah, timey. Rarely have I seen so much intellect and attitude crammed into such a tiny body. But don't let her size fool you. Between her feisty attitude and her skill at Gollomancy, let's just say you wouldn't want to get on her bad side. She comes from Radasun, though her studies have taken her abroad. She first came to my attention when Scarlet's marionette was stomping around. Her obsession with Scarlet's research led to some crucial discoveries. When she speaks about magic, especially that of Elder Dragons, you'd best listen. Alright, so from here I receive a letter that states that I'm supposed to meet uh, my friends in Brisbane Wildlands. And I bring up the map and notice I have yet to be, I have yet to go to Brisbane Wildlands. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to uh, cut at the end of this here and 
head on over to Brisbane Wildlands where we will pick up uh, the next episode. Um, I guess I'm reading the letter to you from the mysterious E. Uh, we get a couple letters from E. We don't know who E is. Uh, I think E also had something to do with uh, Season 1 as well. We just don't know who E is. I guess it's a mystery. Maybe we'll find out someday. Uh, anyway, so you can see here, I have yet to be. I have yet to go to Brisbane Wildlands. I need to go all the way to the bottom left corner of Brisbane Wildlands. So we're gonna have to cut the video. Um, so that's it, guys. I will see you next time. And uh, just for the record, I recorded uh, the first three parts of the first chapter. I'm going to re-record them for you because that's the kind of guy I am.